damn but damn so um i've had that comment you made about the hunger games lingering in the back of my mind mm -hmm. and uh we're about to be in for a really long ride so you can totally start pitching what that was about okay um actually i first want to see how this map works it's kind of the same, but not completely. Whoosh. What planet was she on? I don't remember. Do you have a journal or mission quest notes or something? I do, but I think she's on Knossos. I I almost remember that. I'll feel dumb if 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 I'm wrong, but. All right, so. Um, basically, I didn't, when I saw the, the first Hunger Games movie, I didn't know it was based on a book series. I thought it was just a movie. And I was expecting a standalone movie like Battle Royale. So, uh, towards the end of the movie, by the way, spoilers for the first Hunger Games movie. Towards the end of the first movie, when Katniss and uh, Peeta uh, are about to eat the poison berries, I'm like, oh, this is great. So they're going to eat the berries and kill themselves, and everybody around the world watching is going to realize how perverse the Hunger Games really are, and that's going to make everyone in the districts rise up and revolt, and we'll get a montage at the end of the movie showing the rebellion being successful, and Katniss and Peeta basically become uh, martyrs for the cause. And that's how the movie will end. But it turns out they didn't eat the berries, and they, they won the game anyway, and then it set them film up for a sequel. And I left the movie going, I wish they hadn't set this up for a sequel, because you could have ended the narrative in 15 minutes with the montage, and everything would have been wrapped up in a nice, tidy package. And then I mentioned this to a co-worker the next day, who had read, who had been aware of the books. I'm not sure if she read them, but she was aware of the books, and she knew there'd be a couple more movies. And she was like, that's a terrible ending because then you don't get any closure with Katniss's story arc. I'm like, her story arc would have had closure if she just died. She had almost no other, you know, she had a little bit of characterization, but most of her characterization was tied to the fact that she's just from that district and people care about her. And if she's a martyr, people are gonna care about her a lot more. And you saw a couple of scenes during the first Hunger Games movie where people are like, you know, tearing down like the barracks or like throwing bricks at TV screens and stuff in anger. And I thought that that's what, where the movie was leading to. Just, just watching Katniss and Peeta in action were emboldening the populace to rebel against the elites that had been caging them up in these districts. Mm. So I didn't like the ending of the first movie because it ended uh, without wrapping up the whole story. And I never saw the other movies because I just didn't care that much about the narrative outside of, like, you know... I kind of came up with my own headcanon for how the story ended, and I'm satisfied with it. So, I just went to every single planet in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Maybe she's not in the Artemis Tau Cluster. It says she is. Huh. That's the only thing we know about her location. Okay. So... In this game, apparently, it doesn't give you that little side note showing you exactly where you're supposed to go. Uh, so... So no, you're just scanning planets until you find her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> apparently so. Um, unless I missed something about what planet I was supposed to go to. Which is totally possible. I know what color the planet is, if that helps, but... Oh yeah, it's really insane, yeah. I, so what do you do with all the stuff you're collecting? Um, some of it's for side quests. Uh, I think it's in Knossos. I, I, I'm almost 100% sure. But I didn't see it pop up as a little tag. So I was like, eh. eh. I don't remember what planet it was in the... Is it Ethereum? This is it. Gap, this is it. Alright. Um... Let's see. We got Rex. We got Caden. A little debating. Uh, we're going to take Caden over Rex, actually. Um, and we're obviously going to take Tally because we take obviously. Tally every time. We need to take Tally every time. Because Tally's the best. Okie dokie, then. Yeah. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. All right. 
So, welcome to, um... Is we... clicks really spelled with two Ks? I think so. I don't know. It might have been a typo. So, um, this is our first experience with the Mako in Mass Effect 1, which is something that relates specifically to Mass Effect 1 and none of the other games. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people razzing on it. Um, I like it, but a lot of people don't. And we're going to be using the ever-loving piss out of it. Is it, does it really have mostly to do with the control scheme? Um... Because I hear that the control scheme is like, you know, it's like Silent Hill controls or something. You point and then the car just moves regardless of... I just used a word I never wanted to use ever. Irregardless. <laughs> Irregardless. How do you control the Mako? Um, you kind of just... I, I'm controlling it entirely with the sticks right now. Yes, so... so I'm just does... looking in a direction and just pushing forward. Oh, so it goes where you look? Yeah. Okay, well, the the hammerhead does the same thing in two. I thought. So I guess it is that bad. Is that awesome? Um, that... Oh! Is that thing. Okay. Uh, and... that's Sovereign. Oh, no, that's a Geth ship. Yeah. So we're gonna have some fighting. Some, some super sweet tank combat. Now, a funny thing I should probably mention about tank combat in this game is um, you have an experience penalty for um, for uh, fighting things in the Mako, I think. So what you can do, if I can do this right, if I can't, I feel like an idiot. What you can do... Mako shields are almost down. If, oh. I don't know if this is correct. Someone might have to correct me on this. But what you can basically do... Oh, oh thanks for the tutorial. After combat's over. Yeah. Um, what you can basically do is you can bail out of the Mako at the last second before you kill something, and then one of your squad members, if they're tech specialty, can just reach over and use a really quick tech attack on it, and it'll just kill it. Oh. And you'll get full experience. Okay. As if you had killed it... Um, just person to person. Okay. Um, I don't know how often I'll be doing that, but. What's the uh, 77? I don't think we can take that down strong point head on. Oh, Jesus. I see the shields are recharging, but what's the 77 with the wrench over it? That is Omnigel. Oh. And that's the number of times we can repair. But we haven't actually taken any damage because we've been really good about our driving mm -hmm. so far. This thing really does handle like a tank. But in this particular mission, it's actually really easy to die accidentally. So we're gonna just take our time in here. Oh, hey, Geth Juggernaut. Dickhole. Good thing their projectiles move really slowly. Yeah, it enables you to be able to dodge a lot of them. And we have infinite ammo, of course, for the weapons. So. I mean, just go willy-nilly on them. Alright. I think we got pretty much everything clear in here. Hi, buddy. Yeah, there's, there's one major disadvantage to the Mako. Um, and that is... Why is my controller vibrating? Hmm. <laughs> it's just going non-stop. Yeah, it's just going crazy. Oh, can't exit. There we go. All right, we're out. First thing I'm going to do, actually, is we are going to bind some keys. Um, Is that the only thing I have right now? Yeah. Damn. All right, that's fine. At least I know. You're not going to bind squad powers? Uh, no, because they're all auto-shoot. I am, however, going to go ahead and... Oh, I can't save. Unless there's an enemy nearby, I think. God damn it. I want to save! I want to save the game, come on.
Bah. No save for you. What's the quick save button? Sorry, I gotta find this out. This is important because I don't want to have to play for the first part again. Because it's like, it's like a major pain in the ass. This mission, you can die so quickly. Okay, F6. We know that for next time. F6. Quick save failed. God damn it! Well, of course it's gonna fail. If it doesn't allow you to save regularly, it's not gonna quick save. Well, sometimes. Oh. 